Hey everybody, welcome to the Video Craft Show. I am your host, John Santiago, and in this episode, I am talking to Marielle Chartier Heno. She is a very interesting woman. She's an entrepreneur, um, she's a content creator, and she managed to combine her interests in three really different areas, swimming, fitness, and Disney princesses to create the Aqua Mermaid School. It is a really quirky yet unique business that teaches students how to swim like a mermaid. I'm talking about fins and everything. Honestly, you've got to check it out, but you're going to learn a lot about the business in today's show. And you're also going to learn how creating content for YouTube has allowed her to grow her business. That's something that Mariel and I talk about quite a bit. And she explains her approach to leveraging the platform, including how she finds other creators and influencers to collaborate with on potential content. So stay locked in. You're tuned into the Video Craft Show presented by Video Husky. Okay, Mariel, thank you for joining me today. It's really, uh, it's really a pleasure to have you on the podcast. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. So I have to ask you, we were just bantering just a little bit before we started recording here, but I, I just had expressed to you how excited I am to have you on the podcast because you have such a unique business. <laughs> and like, yeah. this is going to be a little bit different from some of the conversations that I've had so far on the podcast with with um, strictly content creators. But you, I, I tell me if this is... Um, if if I'm in the right lane here in terms of perceiving you this way, but I kind of consider you more of just an entrepreneur first and then a content creator second. So you have this really unique business. Content creator came with my business like naturally. I'm more like I run the business and I started creating content for fun and marketing and it. I just happened to really like it and put more effort into it. So so tell me about your your business right so you have you run aqua mermaid um it's a mermaid school started in montreal where you're from originally correct exactly then it's uh it's a mermaid business and we teach people how to swim with mermaid tails we sell swimmable mermaid tails and we book mermaids for birthday parties for swimming pool parties then everything related to mermaids it's what i do I, I, you know, in doing research for this interview, I just, I found it so fascinating how you came up with this business idea and you have like a very, it seems like you have like a very long and history background in, in entrepreneurship, right? Like you started, you started a business when you were in high school, right? And yes. that w what was that business? Then I started first with a, a window washing company. Then it's like a student franchise to do your business during the summer and mainly you wash windows and then I was running a team of window washer and doing door to door selling wash wash for the, the, the windows and it's I just love doing my stuff. I don't feel like I want to work hard for someone else but when it's for myself I can I'm the super worker I'm a super hard worker. So and then you, you know, you you did a little you had a little stint in like the corporate world and whatnot. And then you ended up starting this business. What about uh, four or five years ago? 2015, was it? Yeah, 2015. I was um, looking. I always knew I wanted to be my own boss and run my business. And I was looking for ideas. And I just started to do something I like swimming, sport. And I like Disney princesses and I kind of fusion did a fusion of all my passion and my mermaid school came up. <laughs> How is it that you were able to find just kind of weave all of these things together into one and find this this like basically very profitable niche? I think I was just doing something I loved. I saw a little video of a, someone swimming with a mermaid tail on Facebook and then I just purchased one, start swimming and I said, I'm probably not the only one who wants to do that because I, I just love doing it. And I got really good like feedback from people swimming, singing me at the pool. And then I feel like, let's try to open a mermaid school. And I, I was 
like really happy to see that other people wanted to do it. And I was kind of uh, um, like the success was so big at the beginning because I opened it during the winter in Canada see mermaids in the pools then I got a really big media launch I got free publicity all the television locally called me to come and see the mermaid school and because it's so like colorful and fun I think it's easy to get out there and people find you and want to try it yeah tell me a little bit about how you went and promoted this this business when you started how did you go about validating your idea and and actually um finding and discovering the market for it yeah then mainly it just started um referrals like word of mouth people when they come for a mermaid class the first thing they want to do is to take a photo and post it on social media check i was a mermaid this is the cool thing i did this week then that was really easy for me uh and also what i did a lot i invited um influencers youtubers instagrammers for a free mermaid class and in exchange they post a photo they write a blog post then i i did a lot of exchange and like when you start a business it's so hard to have money for marketing then i was yeah inviting people medias a lot of pr um also posting photos on social media, inviting people to share. And it really went organically. And I didn't know it was for, is this for kids? Is this for adults? Uh, and mainly it's for both. I have like young kids that are seven years old that do their birthday party as a mermaid. But I also do bachelorette with older women who still love mermaids. And I'm really, I'm on the feminine side, <laughs> all the women, mainly there's a few guys coming, but mainly like just, mainly girls that are, are doing it. And um, my, just how I do it with my business is the minimal viable product. Try to do the minimum you can do, try with the business and see um, if it works. And then after that, invest into what works the best. But I invested almost nothing. I think I started this business with $3,000. I just bought some fins and rented time, like a few hours at the pool per week, and that's it. And then after that, I grew it up. I, I want to go back a little bit in terms of um, what you had mentioned when you kind of got into this into this world of <laughs> of being a mermaid. You had mentioned that you, you know, you went to the pool and you were swimming at your at your local pool. I imagine in this in this with this mermaid fin in this in this mermaid gear. What what like was there not a part of you that was a bit self-conscious about that, like going in or were you, were, were you just totally confident? <laughs> I feel for me, um, when you just swim regular, nobody cares about you. You just do your things. But when you put the mermaid tail on, you become a magical creature and people smile and want to take pictures with you. And like, you get an amazing vibe of happiness and smile and this energy. That's what draw me to this. Like, uh, first, I'm not a shy person, but on top of it, I got an amazing energy from it. And that's why I wanted to keep doing it. Um, and I just knew, like, there is something around this. Like, when you do something and it makes people happy and they want to come in, into your world, I think, uh, yeah, that's what drew me to this. I think it's really cool, too, the way that you you started. You you kind of have this business, again, that has, like, built-in virality to it. Like, it's it's the kind of thing that people, like, they want to tell their friends about, like you said. You know, it's just such a novelty type of experience that, you know, people, regardless, will will go and, and, and share it. Do you find that that's the case also with the content that you're creating on YouTube? Yeah, I feel... It's just really nice to watch. And also what's, what's interesting about the content is that it's so niche um, that there's not a lot of content about it or the people who do it uh, are like, like hobbyists. Like if you like mermaids, you're normally a little girl uh, or a teen or, and you, there's not really good content about it. And I wanted to give people like something higher quality and in depth. And I think that's why people 
they find me and mermaids are really popular in all cultures there is mermaids there is the happy mermaid from disney but there's also the dark siren then i have a wide variety of things to play with mermaids <laughs> and making nice videos with it so how how big of a space is this like i i've seen that there are conventions <laughs> around around uh this particular niche i mean is this like a world is this like a worldwide global phenomenon that you know yeah. you, you kind of just stumbled into uh, i mean um if you check like the google search for the term mermaid 2015 when i started was really the peak it's still pretty high but right now mermaids and unicorns are due to like terms that are really high search i feel it's um as a sport as a swimming activity, it's still brand new. People are still discovering it. I think it started max 10 years ago. People doing their homemade mermaid tail, and now you can purchase some um, that are made. Um, there is uh, a big online community watching like movies and forums. Uh, like the market, it's, market itself, I would say the big part is to sell the mermaid tails. And just to give you an idea, it's about $50 million as a market. Um, then it's pretty big and there's not many players, um, but it's, that it's there. And also people like they start as kids, but they still stay in it. There's a lot of adults. It's like a bit like Comic-Con and people who like costumes. There's those big convention where people get custom made silicone mermaid tails that can cost two to $5,000 a piece. And like we make mermaid tails that are used for movies and commercials. Then there's really a wide like variety of things that from kids parties to movies. And that's what I like. It's there's always something connected to mermaids. <laughs> how how have you been able to expand this over the years? I know that now like you you sell fins yourself in addition to to running these schools. Um, it started like with the mermaid schools, just teaching people how to swim with the mermaid tails. And then after that, people wanted to buy the mermaid tails, the gear, but I could not sell it to them because I would need it for the next class. Then I started to investigate if I was able to buy and mermaid tails and sell them. But I really like there was n nobody really selling mermaid tails in bulk. Then I decided to go right to China, find manufacturer and start making my tails and selling them because I was using so many for my schools. And then one, like in any sport, if you want to get into it, you want to buy your own equipment. And from one school in Montreal, I expanded to three school in Ottawa, Toronto, the city close to Montreal. And then after that, I got people asking me for like franchises. Then I went to, I created like a license program. And then now I, I train people who wants to open their own mermaid school. And I have about 15 school across Canada and the U S and it's just, it's just growing and growing. People like it. And like I said, if you are organized in a niche that is normally mainly artists um, that are really passionate and love what they do, but they don't really know how to manage your business. You can go really far, really quickly. What, what was the process like in terms of expanding across North America? Uh, I mean, when you have a good recipe somewhere, I was just replicating it different places and I was doing managing everybody remotely. Most of the time what I did, I just um, either the people that wanted to open a new school, they came to me for a training or I went to their city, start them up with the how to teach the swimming lessons, how to use the equipment. And then after that, I centralized everything on one website. Then all the bookings happen on one website. We have one um, call center, then all the bookings come to the call center. Then it's really easy to manage locally because you just need to deal with the pool section, uh, teaching face to face to people, but all the rest and management, I centralized it. Um, that way it's cost efficient and we know how to manage it better. And we keep the same pricing and all the same standard for all the schools. Oh, cool. So it's the same. So if, if I were to go to your school in Las Vegas, it's the same price as it would be in Montreal. Yeah, it's just we just kept Canadian dollars for Canada, $60 or $60 in the US, but it's Canadian or USD. How many people do you normally have in, in each? It's, it's, a, it's by class, right? Like how many people do you have per class? 
Yeah, like uh, I would say a class uh, would be between five to 10 people. Uh, and then we supply you a mermaid tail. You're one hour with us in the pool and we teach you different swimming techniques. And at the end, we have time for photos, obviously. Um, and it passed really fast. Most people, they feel like they're flying on the water because the fin is, you, you have a really big fin and you push so much water and you go much faster. Uh, but it's much harder than it couldn't look like. <laughs> yeah, that's what was, I, I saw a, a video of, of you on uh you were featured on shopify's youtube channel and it was so interesting to hear you talk about how it's it's really a workout like aesthetically it, it looks cool it's it's novel right you know you can kind of pretend you're in the little mermaid or something like that but there's like a workout and exercise element to this business yeah that's it and it mainly focused on your core muscle your glutes your tie your your back then it's it started more like a, as a hobby, me discovering what it is, swimming like a mermaid, but now we even run, there's a world mermaid championship. And then you perform a routine in a giant aquarium. Uh, and I went to per perform in China last year for the competition. And now I will be running the North American one then in the giant aquarium. And this is where we want to really become official as a sport. Um, and we are also part of the um, artistic swimming, the synchronized swimmer group uh, in the USA, then it's, it's really coming to the next level now because people do a one mermaid class, but we want them to take more. And one mermaid class, you just learn the basic of like the dolphin kick, a big wave movement with your body. But the rest after that, uh, you can like the breath holding, you want to stay longer in the water and then your cardio. There's a lot that you can do and then learn how to swim with the heavy costumes and then also you don't wear any goggles any nose clip it's it's a mermaid it needs to look natural and flawless super easy underwater then there's a lot to do um to learn so let's kind of shift gears a little bit more into um you know the content creation side of things like i imagine the reason why you you started creating content about your business was obviously to help promote the business right so how did you how, what was your what what kind of resources did you look to to kind of figure out you know creating content for youtube yeah at the beginning it really started just for fun i was like i like to be a mermaid i'm going to take a few videos with my gopro on the water and put it up uh on the youtube channel and there was no editing nothing i just put it up there and then I started to get traction. Then I said, oh, maybe you should put more time into this. Um, and then I started to, yeah, like have an outline to my videos and topics. Um, and then I started to search. What it really helped me is to search for keywords. And this is one of my biggest asset with my company is to work on SEO. Uh, search search engine optimization and mainly I search which key words terms have a high search volume but are really easy to target and uh, good for me mermaid is a niche that not too many compete <laughs> no there's not too many people competing in but mainly I find some keywords that I can target like um, how to swim like a mermaid it's a keyword with like a little sentence or mermaid uh, hair underwater, how to wear a wig underwater. There's a bunch of keywords that you can get mermaid names. A lot of people type this in Google and search. And I, that's what I do mainly. I find keywords um, and I make it as a title and I make a video about it. That was one of my way to get uh, videos that ranked really well. And also I was just typing mermaids and searching in, in YouTube videos about mermaids and I watch them and I see what they talk about and I try to make a video with the same topic but better and longer and that was techniques I used to get some good content that people wanted. I also noticed too on your YouTube channel I, I'm curious if you can share any share any details on this but obviously you do quite a lot of product reviews of, <laughs> of your fins right and yeah. so those that as content in itself reflects somebody who is 
is uh, maybe interested in buying the product if they're searching those key terms, right? In terms of of product reviews, do you do you find that though that type of content tends to generate more more business in terms of purchasing of fins for you? Yeah, um, I mean yes and no. Um, for me, I want to be seen as the expert in my field. And if I just talk about the fin that I sell, people will say, oh, she's just selling stuff. But if you make content in general about something people are interested in and they see, okay, I tested all the fins on the market and I'm going to give you my honest opinion about them. And by the way, I sell this one. For me, I, I never say like, this is the best fin ever. I just say for who they are made for. And after that, you make your own decision. And I feel this is a good way for people just to share about what you're doing and you know what you're talking about. Then that's how I've seen it. And also, it's just fun for me to, to see what's the, because when you develop a product, you want to test what's on the market. Um, also, I noticed like silicone mermaid tails are the high end, super expensive ones um, that most people cannot afford, but everybody dream of it. And it's just really nice to watch and people like to dream. Then those ones really work. Then I do reviews of them too. Then you, you just see also which kind of videos work for you and make more of those, even if it doesn't bring sales, but it brings people to come and see your channel and then they watch other videos and they discover everything else you do. Yeah. How long did it take you to get to your current subscriber count now? Like you are, you know, you're at around 80,000. Was there like an inflection point where your, your, your subscribers started to really start taking off? Yeah. Then it took me about one year of hard work to get to a thousand subscribers. And when I got to a thousand subscribers, it went exponential. I think the second year I was in, I was at 10,000. Then it's kind of, you need those base like subscribers and people watching your videos to tell YouTube, Hey, this is a good video. We'll show it to more people. Then I feel this is hard work at the beginning because you get like 50 views and you're like, Oh, what's happening? Why I'm working so hard. But that's what I was good because I was making those videos anyways. I was just enjoying the process of making them. And that's what people sometimes they just want to be instant famous <laughs> or something like it doesn't work like you need. And also I was posting once a week um, on a regular base. If I like, and sometime I know like it was not the best, but I was like, I need to post. And I just put myself some kind of pressure to put, post once a week. And um, yeah, after a year, two years, and now I'm, yeah, maybe three or four years in, I don't really, I didn't start the YouTube channel right away in 2015 when I started the business, but, and now it's kind of, uh, also sometimes you get like a little influx from a really video, popular video, but be steady and keep posting like on the same schedule. There has to be like some level of just faith <laughs> that it will ultimately work out, right? Like, was that something that you were able to develop just through your your experience in entrepreneurship in understanding like, okay, these inputs go here, but I may not see the results right away, but I know from like past experience that eventually things will will work out. Yeah, I mean, I talked to a lot of YouTubers and like just watch the people that are successful and what are they doing? The people that have really big channel, they post every day. And like, I could not sustain to post every day, but like, I just found like, okay, once a week is feasible for me. Um, and yeah, every, every time I found like someone that makes a good video, I tried to see, okay, how did they structure it? Uh, how is the intro, what they're talking about? Um, also like my, my videos now, are like I think are much better. I also like, edited all my videos for probably two years uh, before like working with you guys and hiring someone to help me edit. Um, but I was like, <laughs> low cost, just do everything yourself, do it fast. And like, after a while, if you do once a week, you, you're starting to get better. And like, you don't need to film yourself like so many cuts and like, you're not stumbling on your words too much, you know, okay, I'm just, this is my main intro. I do my videos and then my conclusion and boom, like it's not too long. Uh, and I saw a, ba a batch them. Then sometimes I do one day, I have all my script ready. I do 
all my filming and then I'm done for like the two next months because I did a bunch in a day. Then that's a good trick because you sometimes it takes a lot of time to set your camera and go at the pool for me and like film underwater and all my stuff. So you'll plan out your content way far in advance. You'll, do you just kind of sit down at your at your office desk or something and just start brainstorming ideas for a few minutes or an hour or something like that? Yeah, then mainly like I always have a like a notepad with me on my phone and like sometime I just ideas come come to me and I just write them down and one like one time I sit at my computer write all my ideas and like mainly it's it's all SEO like I don't do a video like randomly I need it needs to have some keywords power in it for me to be worth it to do it um, then uh, I check ideas I have. Uh, and there's a really good tool called Ahref, and it's mainly you type a keyword, and you know is there a lot of research, uh, volume of search for it, and also like they tell you other words that are related in the same categories. Then I can, and then I just click on a bunch of keywords, and I find and I find a list, and then I think about ideas for videos. And also right now with my channel, I ask people, hey, what do you want me to make a video about? Also like. I, I create like products. Uh, I make like mermaid custom made mermaid tails, and every time I create a product, I make a video about it. I say, "Hey, this product is ready to send to the customer. I'm just gonna do a little showcase of that beautiful mermaid tail before it goes." And then I just everything. All my product is like content for me. Then anybody who's like an artist or anything they make. Also, when I go at the pool, I can make videos of the swimming lessons. Um, and it's everything I do in my day to day, if you want, within the business is some content. And I feel like why nobody is doing that? Like if you're painting, if you're doing anything or also what's really worked really well is uh, the behind the scene, uh, like how I do, how do I make the mermaid tails and showing off like the content. It's like I do it anyways. You just need to film it. Yeah, I saw like one of your most popular videos is is like you making a mermaid tail for a Penelope Cruz mm -hmm. commercial in Spain, right? Yeah. And so that hat in itself is like, there's a keyword there it, it built in with Penelope Cruz, a very famous actress, but then it's this unique angle of, you know, showcasing how this, this product is made for a commercial shoot that she does. Yeah. Film everything that you do. I think people are interested. And also I try... I have nothing to hide pretty much. I want a lot of people are like, oh, this is my secret recipe of success or how I make my stuff. I feel people will buy more from you because they know exactly how you make it um, and how you do it. And most of the work is not like a lot of people, even if they know how you do it, they're not going to make it themselves. It's too much work and <laughs> they just want, I mean, it makes you trustworthy, I think. Where, where did you learn that from? Like, where did you, because again, there's most people, there are a lot of people in business who have a tendency to say, oh, I need to, you, I need you to sign this non-disclosure agreement <laughs> before I tell you this, the secrets of how I make my, you know, my product or whatever. But you, you have this openness about the way that you're approaching business that is, it's, it's starting to become a trend now these days, especially with social media. But I mean, I think in general, you just kind of have to be that kind of person from, from the start. So where, where does that come from? Um, uh, it's just, it's maybe because I'm really focused and I don't really care what other people do. I just, I'm doing my thing. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know for me, it's just, yeah, I guess it's who I am. I feel like do it if you can do it and have success with it good for you but like there's some like people i'm really an action taker as a personal it type and most people are not action oriented and they talk too much and i just i just do things i don't talk too much about it and that's maybe sometime i should stop back and think more about things uh but that's just the way i do it i share and like that's how i make friends and like I like my boyfriend has his own company too. And he like, he shared so much with me Then I try to help people around me too. And just skip to the next one and it comes back to you. Yeah. There's like a big difference between, <laughs> between idea and execution. 
Like some people, how many people have said like, oh, I thought of like the idea for, for social media before everybody else, but then you didn't do anything about it, right? And like, yeah, just like even for videos, some people say, oh, I want to start a YouTube channel. I have all the footage ready. I just need to edit it. And I offer them, I said, I'm, I'm using this service. I can just edit it for you. <laughs> like I just sent it to my editor and people just never sent me their footage. Like it's just, People talk and talk and do nothing, but like, do it, <laughs> just do it. And it will never be perfect, but just keep posting. And then now I think it's really interesting when you go see your old videos and see how they were, they look like, and now the evolution up to yeah. now. Yeah. Do you think that's kind of like the line between what makes someone successful at business and somebody who isn't successful at business is just literally just taking action. There is taking action. There is also surrounding you with people that have success. And like, because some people take action and like, that's good. But if you always do the same thing and it's not working, like, I mean, action doesn't work either. Then for me, like I iterate, like, oh, this is not working. Okay, then just move to the next thing and try to, yeah, be humble. I don't have a really big ego. I just work on it and try to find something that works and someone who did it before that's a successful business know how to do it because they did it. Have you, have you had a chance to connect with like other YouTubers to, to, to kind of help you optimize your own process with creating content? Yeah. then I was really lucky in Montreal, there's no YouTube space, but they did a YouTube pop-up one year and they invited like um, YouTubers to meet up. Um, and that was really fun. And also what was interesting is they were um, putting us per group of like how many subscribers you have. And that's really, that was like, oh, do you have 10,000 subscribers, 25,000 subscribers? And then you can connect with people that are working at the same level as you. Uh, because sometimes it's hard to find like who are the YouTuber who live in your city. Um, then it's kind of a bit tough. But with the YouTube pop up and there's YouTube space, you can connect with people. Um, and yeah, I just asked them what are the, and I did a lot of collaboration. Then mainly some people, they do a video with me. I invite them for a memory class or um, there was some YouTube uh, makeup artists um, and they made like a mermaid uh, makeup for Halloween. And we did, and we just give shout out to each other. Hey, if you want to learn more about this, go check out her channel about makeup and things like that. Then that helped us to get more um, views. Then collaboration is really good. Is that something that you still try to do quite a bit of with your YouTube channel? Yeah, like lately it's crazy with COVID. I, I've kind of disconnected a bit from other people. But yes, this is like always, and it's free. Like I'm, I'm, I'm really cheap with <laughs> my marketing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what can I do? But yeah, I'm planning another makeup uh, partnership. And this is like a waterproof makeup and underwater. Um, and like from my YouTube channel, I got so many cool opportunities uh, uh, with medias um, to travel. Also, I, I do a lot of mermaid competition uh, abroad and I just kind of did the, the vlog style. Just like, I feel just sharing, I think it's, that's the new way with social media, just be really open uh, with the people that follow you and share what's happening in your life. And if it's exciting, people will want to follow you. Um, then yeah, just be authentic and people are going to ask you a question and you interact with them. With, with collaborations too, do you try to find people who may be um, somewhat similar in the kinds of people that you're trying to reach? You know, like you mentioned their makeup artists, that, that seems like there's, there's a bit of overlap or crossover there. But then maybe, I'm not sure if you would do like a collaboration with like, a personal finance YouTuber or something like that, but you never know. Um, I mean, some, but you need to be in your, I think also if you reach out to other YouTubers, they should be around the same uh, number of subscribers as you are, um, or smaller than you to be interesting for them. Um, because if you have like, whatever, a 500 subscriber and you reach out to someone with thousands of sub subscribers, maybe they won't see the value into it unless you, you have a special talent or something. Um, but yeah, just think about ideas. What, what I don't like and what does not work is someone just say messaging you, hey, do you want to do a collaboration? 
here's my YouTube channel. Like, just be really specific. Like, I message people, hey, I'm looking for a makeup artist to do a collaboration for a, a waterproof makeup. Like, that's super specific. And this is the look I'm looking for. And, the, and you, you explain what you offer and what they can get out of it. And I normally, I try to always just give, give something. I don't ask too much. I give them a free mermaid class to come and try. Um, I'm into the more the lifestyle, like DIY things. But I mean, in yeah, find people. If you have an idea that could work for them, just pitch it to them. You don't know what you could do with someone in finance. <laughs> it could happen. Yeah, you never know. There could be like people... Maybe it might not be their entire audience, but there's, you know, people are, human beings are complex. We have different interests and whatnot. And for them, it can just be something like eye-catching, like, hey, did you know, like, they talk about finance, but they always share a bit with what they did during the weekend before or something like that um, with their family or, yeah, like surprise them and say, how can you grab the attention of their listeners? No. Now, do you, do you make like a, like a list or do you have like a, a spreadsheet of, of all these people or is it just kind of like, like your content ideas, you're just kind of um, taking notes of them in, in a notepad and, and then revisiting it when the time comes to try and reach out for potential collaborations. I mean, I have a, a list of ideas of like, Oh, I'm looking for someone who does this uh, like the makeup or like, I'm looking for like a, a synchronized swimmer or like a, a seamstress to do something um and then like some some days i just actively look for youtube channel the the thing is hard is that most of the time you don't know where they are based on youtube you can know their country but you don't know much more than that then it's a lot by when you talk to a youtuber you can ask them hey do you know other local youtubers or if you just follow them personally um you know where they are based at um then it's a lot of research i mean to find youtubers or like instagrammers or any media blogger like it's i do a lot of, i feel like i'm a little in investigator and like <laughs> on their, like on twitter you know their city then i often go on twitter try to find what's their email on facebook like i just spend a lot of time researching people trying to find their contact where they're located um and i would say i get a 10% response rate um, that work finally. Um, then for, you need to send 10 emails to get one person to like do something with you. Then it's it's hard work, but it, it works at the end and it's mainly, it's just your time. Yeah, it's just a numbers game ultimately at the end. So if you know, if you know you can get 10%, right? And your goal is maybe to collaborate with 20, then you would just have to divide 20 by by 10%. And then that's the number of people that you would have to target and pitch. Yeah, that's it. And I would say always contact them, give away, give something that you can do to them. And after that, uh, they will, it's always good to give instead of asking. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 it's, and it's also just understanding too, that you know, you, you can't take it too personally if somebody says no, because it may not necessarily be a hard no. It could just be no, not right now, but That's it. Yeah. follow it with me it later. The yeah. I mean, again, these things just seem like they're very similar to what you are already doing in business, right? Like you're not going to capture the entire market. There's, you, you know, your audience, you know, the people that you want to reach, but you know, you're only going to convert a small sliver of those people um, into becoming customers of yours. Yeah. So in in terms of planning content again, um, how do you stay organized? You know, how do you how do you make sure that you you don't um, you don't fall off track when it comes to being consistent and, and publishing on on a regular basis? then i plan ahead i like i make videos like at least two or three months in advance uh i always have some videos in the queue ready to be posted um and yeah batch them do a bunch in a day and then send edit them and then um yeah i just schedule them in uh, my my schedule but you need to be in advance you can i would say if you start the channel you need to be at least two months like free that are ready for to post automatically 
Are there any particular tools that you use to to keep yourself organized, or are you just somebody that kind of likes to use classic things like pen and paper or a spreadsheet? Yeah, I just mainly Google Docs. I make I have my Google Docs of ideas, and then I put I start making them. Also, what I do with my content is that um, all my content or most of it is a YouTube video, but it's also a blog post. Then because I work so hard to like find all the information I share in my YouTube videos, I, I just decided to put them in writing too. That way it gives me extra content. Um, but yeah, I just have my list. Uh, and also I plan it according, the, for me it's kind of seasonal because when you go in the pool outside during the summer is short, then I want to have a lot of videos done there. Um, but if I know a new product is coming out, if I have orders, um, I just try to make as much content as possible anytime I do things. Some videos are not really planned, it's just the behind the scene. And I just slot them in, make as many as possible. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, there's, I'm never running out of ideas. If I, I don't know what to do, I just ask, uh, like my subscriber, I post uh, in the chats. And uh, you always should have a list of ideas that you can work on. So when you ask your subscribers to to maybe give you some ideas, are you picking the ones that seem to come up quite often? Like uh, when you see an idea mentioned multiple times, you're like, okay, there's at least several people who are asking for this. I will I will go and try and make this kind of content. Um, if a lot of people ask for it, yes. But also sometimes it's just one person who asks for it, and I like I feel it's interesting. I never thought of this. Or I, sometimes I put it on my list, like, Oh, like this is complicated to do, but maybe at one point it will fit in my schedule or I can make it happen. Then, um, I like, sometime I was traveling, there is like a mermaid parade in New York city. Then I went there and like, and I, then when I was there, I said, Oh, I'm going to interview local mermaids in New York. Then I, I kind of, when I travel, I do a lot because I try to combine it with like, who's in that specific city? Can I do collaboration there? Is there something specific? Then I do a lot of research according when I travel. Um, yeah, I mean, just put your list. And I also have my keywords that I know are popular. Then I, I kind of have my keywords, my ideas, and I kind of combine them. Gotcha. Um... Another thing I wanted to ask you about too, in terms of being consistent on YouTube is challenges or hurdles for you, right? Like what, what are some of those, those hurdles or challenges that may at times, you know, kind of get in the way of, of posting consistently? Technical problems. Um, so you forget the SD card or stuff like that. You're out of battery. Um, what I, I have now like a, a slug, like a, a battery with the wire that I can plug in the wall. Then I can, I'm never out of battery. That was a good thing. Um, yeah, like along the years, I, I bought a bunch of like more advanced gear. If you want, uh, I have a drone that's really nice to take cinematic shots. Um, uh, what else to be consistent? I mean, I, I just, for me, I write, my, I write like the big outline of my um my videos i like i don't like just improvising i like to be really in depth of, and do research then when i'm starting a day of filming i know exactly what i'm going to talk about it's it's ready um for people who want to be keep on track i mean this is a discipline question like even if you don't feel like it you need to find ideas <laughs> And like I would say, just put all your ideas, even if, if you feel they're not the best. And just at one point, it's, it's like the creativity process, just put stuff out. Um, and sometimes I feel it's not the best. I just talk over the camera and you can cut it. That's fine. You can cut it if it's not good. <laughs> and it's, it's just, you just need to do it. You can set yourself. I don't really set myself like a day of the week. I just, sometimes I feel, oh, I'm getting low on, on videos. Okay, I'm going to put the day and I, I work on this all day and get it ready to film. Yeah, you strike me as a as a person who's not much of a perfectionist. Would that be no. would that be right? <laughs> I'm not a perfectionist at all. And that's maybe it's helping me a lot. Uh, because it's like it needs to be done. It's 90% perfect. It's just gonna go. And I think 
that's why I can take action and, and put stuff out and like sometimes like oh the sound like is not really good on the video or the camera is shaky but this is what I have I'm gonna my, do my videos anyway and I just noticed that people um, like good audio is good, but like they want good content. If the content is good, but the quality of the camera is not perfect, people don't really care too much. Also, something I noticed at the beginning, I was not really in my videos. I was just kind of showing stuff. And then I noticed people want like want to have a face to your channel. Then I started to put myself like, hey, this is Maria, this is my channel, and I'm this is what I'm sharing. And people now they they know you and they connect with you, and that really helped me. Um, to get the people subscribing to um, following me as a person who owns a business and not following a business. Do you have people coming to your schools or even buying your fins now? Um, it, people just approaching you and saying, hey, I like watched your YouTube videos and that's what led me here. Is, is that happening to you quite often? Yeah, that's, that's really funny because like sometimes I feel like a mini celebrity, especially if like I go to like a mermaid conference and it's just people who love mermaids. Like they know me for sure because I'm the biggest mermaid channel on, on YouTube. Um, yeah, you feel uh, people tell me a lot when they, they come at the school, oh, I found out on YouTube. Like that's, the main way people find me and my business oh uh, like my my daughter was watching youtube videos and then they they just they ask for a mermaid for their birthday then the parents search online and they find me um and also because i speak french i have an accent and people like when i speak stop talk like start speaking with them oh, i recognize you from your youtube channel the way you speak um then it yeah this is pretty fun people not on the street but like in specific events uh people like and also they come at the school and they want me to teach them a mermaid class. Now I'm more like managing stuff, but people run to take photos with me and stuff. And it's fun. I'm, I'm curious if, uh, if that gets overwhelming at all for you, like being a bit of a, mi a mini celebrity at, at some of these conferences and conventions. I mean, it's not overwhelming because it's, it's just like, like a one weekend and stuff like that. Then it's really when I go to specific events that people know me. Um, but I feel, I feel it's pretty nice because you're kind of always alone in front of your camera and you speak to the camera, but like, it's fun to see who's really watching and then see them like put the face behind like 80, 80,000 people saw this video. Like this is a lot of people and like millions of people watch this video and then you're like, okay, like those people are real. <laughs> I think it really makes more sense. Uh, to see those people sometimes. Okay, I want to rewind back to uh, in terms of how you script your videos. You've touched on that a little bit here in this conversation. What do your scripts normally look like? What do you have? I imagine now at this point you have like a template for for how you piece yeah, these then, things together. Then mainly I always start with um, like a 10 second teaser of the best shots of my video. Then just to catch people attention is like, so like a super fast cuts of nice, interesting piece to catch their eyes of 10 seconds. And then I do my introduction. I just say, hey, my name is Marielle and today we'll do this or we'll, this is the intro of my video. And then I jump in the video, the main content, either yeah, a review or whatever the content is of the video. And then at the end, I'm always doing a closing, thank you for watching. And I try to do some call of, to action, then ask them what they think, or I tell them, hey, my next video will be about this. That way they, they make sure to subscribe. Then um, yeah, try to connect or ask them, hey, what, what would you like to listen in my next video? And after that, at the end, I just put another, some like another 10 second of B-roll. Uh, that way I can put my end cards for YouTube, whatever videos they can click on. And that's kind of my main structure. And then when filming, do you have, uh, is that a situation where there is a little bit more improvisation when you're actually on the camera? Or do you have like the exact words that you want to say in, in certain situations? I imagine not with like vlogs, obviously. That's, that's Yeah, more. no, then I, I like when I do like reviews and things like that, um, I, or like informational, I do research and I have uh, bullet points that I put myself on the, a sheet 
but I don't, I don't use a teleprompter or something like an actual script. Um, then I just know my key points I want to talk about. And because I like, this is my specialty, I know what I'm talking about. I just want the reminder and an order of what I'm talking about. Um, and then, yeah, most of the time I just film the audio. I tell everything and I add B-roll after. Then I do all my talking at my house. Uh, and then after that, I go to the pool, film everything, and then I put it together. I know you've mentioned here quite a bit your reliance on on SEO to to get your videos discovered. Um, but are there other promotional tactics or strategies that you you employ to to promote your videos and and get the word out there about them? Um, at the beginning, uh, because like to get to a thousand, you need to do everything. You a thousand subscribers to your YouTube channel, you need to like push it more, I guess. Um, and I was like sharing my videos on Facebook uh, and inviting people from Instagram. I was trying to share my videos more. Right now, I just feel it. it's, it's almost nothing, my own marketing that I can do, sharing with my friends and sharing on my Facebook page. Um, uh, when I do a collaboration with another YouTuber, like we kind of share about it at the same time when we post it right now, like I, all the content, I put the blog post and I put it, I put the video plus the text and people find it on my website. Um, but no, mainly it's, I just let YouTube do his thing in the video post. Uh, like I post on Instagram, a photo, related to the video and I said, Hey, new video posted, but it's really minimal right now. It's just, I focus on creating the best content possible on the topic. And I think that's what works. If you create good content, people will watch it. Um, I also try to always change camera angle. Like I don't want to see my face talking for too long uh, because like people get bored and I try to like jump cuts different angle, different camera, or just cutting, cutting in closer to my face um, every like few seconds because I want people to stay like on the video. It'd be really catchy. Do you try repurposing your content as well for other, for other platforms like on Instagram or Facebook or other? Yeah, then other that's areas? it also with my, uh, like with my editor, like I just have my main video and I ask like a short version that is without talking uh like a square format for youtube uh for instagram uh that i post um yeah i think it, it's like teasers video for my long video gotcha so what advice would you give to somebody who is just maybe maybe they're hitting like the thousand subscriber mark and they they've seen a little success but maybe they're kind of you know leveling off a little bit what what kind of advice would you give them to just to just um continue to keep building and growing their their following on youtube yeah i would say do a youtube channel about something you love that you will do the video for yourself first like i do mermaid videos even if nobody was watching i would do I would do them because I like doing them. And this is a good way for you to be constant because it's it's enjoyable. Um, don't do them for like the money. Uh, the YouTube ads revenue is not big. Uh, you mainly do it, the money that you will make from your videos or from other product. Like I make mermaid videos. I can sell mermaid tails. That's how I make mer money from it. I sell mermaid swimming lessons, but it's not from the ads directly. Um, and yeah, find successful YouTubers and hang out for them. Offer them your time for free to help them and learn from them. I think being with success successful people is the way to go. Then and yeah, just keep trying different things and do what, enjoy making your videos itself. Yeah, that's that's so critical. I think it's just like really loving the process of of what you do. I think that's like so applicable across whatever platform, whether it's YouTube or if you're running a blog or if you're doing a podcast or something, you kind of just need to be able to do it 
for free. And again, it's it's again, it ties back to like your business. You just you just like these things. You were just very interested in those in swimming, and you were interested in 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 mermaids and and princesses, and you just. Like if the business didn't work out, you probably I imagine you would still be like at the pool swimming yeah. with these mermaid that's fans, it. right? And yeah, I think that's the same. Like like YouTube is like a small business, but I just enjoy it. And because it like for my just the business, like it took me two years of not paying myself a salary before it, it became successful. Then it's it's hard work, but if you like it, it's if you don't feel like you're working, like it's just really fun and people share your passion and yeah, that's why a lot of business fail because people after a year they're like huh this is not working and, and that was something that um a partner run a business and after a year was like you're exactly where you're supposed to be it's okay that you're not making profit and like you're just working things out but like you need to have someone that knows business and say hey no keep working on it you're exactly where you should be so what uh, what is next? What are some things that you have or plans that you have going into the future for your business? I, I imagine just continuing to expand, not only in like North America but like around the globe as well, right? Yeah. Then right now the the big next thing is the mermaid competition. Then bringing really the mermaid swimming hobby to the sport level and running those big competition. I'm looking to uh, get built a giant aquarium. Um, and that's going to be really fun. And um, yeah, expanding right now. Also, we offer a training for people who wants to become swim instructor um, and work, not necessarily start their business, but just get like the certification, like to be a swim instructor or a lifeguard. But now you can be a swim instructor for mermaids. Then we offer that training. Um, and yeah, just get more people to discover about mermaids and make people happy with the mermaid parties. This is awesome. Thank you for doing this, Mario. You're you're like you're a pioneer <laughs> in your <laughs> sure. in your field. It's really cool to just hear you talk about your experiences in business and then even how you're there's obviously like a lot of crossover and overlap in terms of how you're using those experiences with with growing a YouTube channel as well. So, thank you for coming on. My pleasure. Hey, thanks again to Mario for coming on the show. It was really awesome to have her on the program. If you would like to connect with her or find out more about her business, the Aqua Mermaid School, feel free to check out the podcast show notes as well as the YouTube description. If you are watching the video version of this podcast, we've got all the information to her website, to her business, to her YouTube channel linked there. And remember, if you enjoyed this show, please leave us a review wherever you are tuned in to this podcast. We really enjoy hearing from you. And finally, if you want to stay up to date on everything that we're working on here, make sure you are subscribed to our email list. It's the best way to get frequent updates on when a new episode of the Video Craft Show is out, as well as the other content that we're creating on YouTube. So until then, we'll be seeing you. Thanks for tuning in.